on GBT Gives Back, uh -huh. and it impacts 36 local charities. And we still need charities. So get on to our website and, and, and give us some charities, nominate. But we want to impact local charities. And so what it is is every month, three new charities are up for your for your voting. Mm -hmm. And the public picks whoever is, you know, the one that wins. And what they win is a $500 donation from Give Back Team. I love that. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. We've also got Children's uh, National Hospital Toy Drive coming up yeah. as well. Yeah, so so that is exciting. So she's stuff. done this, like, what is it? Is this our fourth? This is our fourth year. My goodness. I know. Yes. So and this is my first year. I know. Well, I'm, I'm that, super that's excited Because you're like a kid, Jeremy. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, can I keep some yeah. of those toys? I think it's for me. <laughs> you're, you're spitting facts. That's, so, that's true. No, but so, you know, that was a really cool thing because, um, you know, when I first got introduced to Children's National and the Carathon that, that the station does, you know, I was sitting at a table and I saw, we were looking at the website and it, it showed Dr. Bear's Closet. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is that? Mm -hmm. And so for those people who don't know, it's actually where all the toys go for when a child comes in, it's a birthday, it's unexpected and they don't have something with them, it's a holiday. Just think about a kid being in a hospital and, and how kind of scary that probably Absolutely. is. Yes. And just something like that that they can put in their hands that makes them smile. And that's what Phil Dr. Bear's Closet is all about. So well, Ted's got a couple Barbies in his office <laughs> that you have, like, no lie. So maybe we can donate that, those. We'll, we'll definitely donate those to Dr. Bear's Closet. Yeah. If you have a question for Ginger, this is the Ask the Realtor segment. Yes. So that's where you ask her a question. 540-899-1015 or 800-685-1015. We have Lori who has a question. She says... Uh, they have an old wood siding on their house. They have old wood siding on their house. Will replacing it with vinyl siding raise the value? Yes. Okay, why? Well, because anything that's wood that pests can burrow into, right? Oh, it's, it's a maintenance thing, right? I mean, uh -huh. wood you've got to paint. You have to deal with peeling paint too, and it does depend on how old the house is. But, you know, if someone has older windows that are wood windows, we always recommend that they wrap them with vinyl siding. Mm -hmm. You know, soffits, we, re we recommend that they wrap them. Um, it, it just durability. I mean, you don't have to paint them. You don't have to put really low maintenance. So when you go to sell the house, now a buyer is going to look at that, and definitely it's a perceived value. So if you can change the siding, um, and then you can make it a little more contemporary, maybe too, and the color and everything else. So I would say yes, that that will help you in your value. Lauren, there it is. Get there that vinyl siding. Raise the value of that house. Yeah, that's the goal. I was going to say, Ginger also has, I know she's doing the Give Back Initiative, the Children's National Toy Drive, but you're doing something special in August as well. We're doing a couple of fun things. So we just finished uh, Phil the Backpack, the Backpack Drive for yeah. Staff County Public Schools. So we just finished that. Back to school time. Yeah, back to school. And you invited me to come. I did. I'm so Jer going too. Jeremy's going to be there, which I'm excited about. He's going to adopt a kitty. And I know that we talked about that last month. <laughs> I, I didn't go that far. I'm willing to go and play with the kitties and the dogs and have fun. Adoption. That's up in the air. I don't we'll know. See. I could we'll see. see. You gotta watch those TikToks when like the, the the cat dads. Have you ever seen them where the cat walks up and they're like, "We never, I never wanted a cat," and then they're like best friends. <laughs> and it's like laying on yes. the beard. Oh, so but cute. I'm excited because, as you've probably heard, there's been a lot of um, extra animals that have been coming to our shelters because yes. of the hoarding cases. And mm -hmm. so, I went to the shelter, and I will tell you that they were at capacity oh, and. Wow. If we can help save for a baby life and make a family a little bit bigger, that's what we'd like to do. So all the adoptions are on me on the 27th at Stafford that. County that's Animal Shelter. It's yeah. a really cool thing. I can't yeah. wait to go check it out. And at first I thought it was going to be too early in the morning for me. You said 9.30. 9.30. You like, can handle that. That's my lunch time. Yeah. Yeah. You've been awake I mean, for like yeah, hours. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. August 27th, you said? August 27th. Cool. Now we're going to continue in a moment. Get your questions in 540-899-1015 or 800-685-1015. It's Ask the Realtor with Miss Ginger Walker. Well, I don't know how your week is going so far, um, but it can't be going any worse than Ginger started <laughs> off. She said you, your week started with what, a toilet doing something? Uh, yeah, so we had a couple final walkthroughs for people who were taking possession of their house. And so uh, Monday morning at 9 a.m. I met my client and we were doing a final walkthrough and the power must have been shut off by the seller and I had the buyer and they arrived and we did the final walkthrough and the pressure that came through the house caused a valve on a toilet to get loose. Oh, no. oh, we no. couldn't see what it was and it was just wet on the ground. So I bend down, look around and I get toilet water spewed at my face. Oh. This is like so, a Laverne and this, Shirley yes. moment. <laughs> but that was, so I had to run home, change, and then I ended my same day with doing another walkthrough and the toilet or the bathroom above us, I was in the oh, basement my bathroom, was leaking through the ceiling oh fan. My goodness. And the, the client and I were standing under there and we're like, what, where is that coming from? It was like the, uh, the faint little rain. 
And then the next thing I know, we look up, he touches the fan oh, no. and it pours on the two of us. And I was like, you're kidding me right now. Oh my gosh. But wait, wait, things end in threes. Yesterday I did a final walkthrough and the water was shut off. Oh, so there no. wasn't even any water at all. So I'm done. So my ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That my tough. takeaway from this is walkthroughs. Final walkthroughs are very, 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 very important. And very important. Very important. And utilities being put in your name at the right time are also very important. And that's why you need Ginger. Yeah. Because yep. she does all that or yep. helps you with all that. Yes. Guides you through that. 540-899-1015 or 800-685-1015. If you have a question for Ginger, it is the Ask the Realtor segment <laughs> with Ginger Walker from the Give Back team of Coldwell Banker. Lisa. Ginger, tell us, how do you uh, figure out the selling price of a home so I love visiting the house first because I really want to put my eyes on it to uh -huh. see what they've done or not done to the house so I can kind of compare it to the neighborhood or other homes that have recently sold but I'm a data girl I might not look like it but I dig into the data so I look at multiple data points and one of them is you know the CMA the, okay. the actual analysis of lifetime properties that have recently sold what's your current competition, what's coming on the market. Mm -hmm. And then I also look at statistics, like how many days have the average home sat on the market? For us in this area right now, it's 11. What's the average sales price? Well, actually in our general area right now, that's continuing to go up. So it's uh, it's uh, $441,000. So I look at all different types of numbers and then I want to walk the house because there's certain things that will add value or possibly detract value based on how it shows. Okay, and, and the reason I ask this, one of the reasons I have for asking this is I saw a home go up for sale just a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how long it's been on the market, but I saw it a couple days ago. Sure. And it's a home I had seen before, now it's for sale, and I was very surprised that what they were selling it for was a lot lower than I expected it to be, expected it to be, especially with the location. Right. It was right on the Rappahannock River, pretty oh, much. Beautiful. So, and it was it's a beautiful home. I was just I was surprised by the selling price. So. Well, I can tell you that the average days on market has gone up. So houses are sitting a little bit longer and not as many are moving as quickly mm -hmm. because they're sitting longer. Yep. So pricing is really a sensitive thing, although it's definitely still a seller's market. You know, sellers have to be cautious because if we had this conversation eight months ago, they might have been able to get a higher price for it. But now you have to be realistic because interest rates go up, buying power goes down. Yep. So.